Every one of the 8 billion people living on our planet wants to have a whole body. One of everyone's basic vital functions is to have all five sensory organs active and our limbs performing their duties to the fullest. If you think this is so, you are wrong. Some time ago, Dave Openshaw lost his right leg, but contrary to expectations, it was something he had always wanted. Dave was born into a healthy family. He grew up as a happy boy and did the things that other boys did, but something wasn't usual, he didn't feel like the others, and when he was about four or five years old, he realized he was different because to Dave Openshaw his right leg shouldn't be there, as if it wasn't part of his body. In fact, there was nothing wrong with his leg. It was part of him. But he thought that leg didn't belong to him, and that thought followed him every moment of his life. I know you are surprised and even frightened, but everything I am about to tell you is literally true. For many people the thought of losing a limb is frightening, but not for Dave. He was miserable because he had two legs, and that feeling made him feel lonely and depressed, and one day while surfing the internet he stumbled upon the fact that there were other people like him with limb problems. This is perhaps the most unusual condition that exists, and for the first time Dave learned that there was a name for the feeling he was experiencing the Body Integrity Identity Disorder. Body Integrity Identity Disorder is a mental disorder characterized by a desire to have an emotional or physical disability, or by a discomfort with being healthy to begin with. It's extremely difficult for us to understand, but these people know their limb is there, they feel it, and they realize there's nothing wrong with it, but they feel it's overdone. If you had a third arm or leg, you would definitely feel uncomfortable in that situation and you would want to get rid of that excess through surgery. This is exactly the emotional turmoil that patients with body integrity identity disorder experience. So much so that there are reports of patients asking doctors to amputate their excess limbs and even attempting to do it themselves. According to both law and logic, we have no right to control our own bodily integrity. The law does not change when it comes to this disease, and since the law does not allow amputation of a limb unless it is fatal, there have been countless cases of people trying to cut off their own limbs, jumping from high up and forcing doctors to amputate them. In fact, not only do they feel that they have an extra body part, but their brain puts tremendous pressure on them to get rid of this excess, and unfortunately no method of treatment has yet been discovered that is known to work. There are two things that have been recognized in these patients. The first is that they are all normal, ordinary people and have no social problems. Although what they have done may seem horrible, when we get to know them, we see that they are not in the least different from ordinary people. The second is that they know exactly where their limbs should be amputated. In other words, the individual with body integrity identity disorder can determine millimeter by millimeter which part of their body they want to get rid of. Isn't that interesting? Dave Openshaw describes the feeling that caused him to become an amputee this way. It was a constant conflict of ideas in my head. I was going crazy and I realized it wasn't normal. I was trying to shut out my thoughts, but they always started all over again. I guess this is what perfect hell looks like. But what is the origin of this unthinkable problem? A research team at the University of California thinks it may have found the answer by focusing on a special area of the brain, the parietal lobe. The parietal lobe is responsible for spatial orientation, the perception of taste, pain, and tactile sensations, as well as the processing of information by joints and muscles. The research team concluded that individuals with body integrity identity disorder have damage or deficits in this area of the brain. In their test, the researchers measured reactions in the parietal lobe through contact with the person's body and found that while the brains of normal people showed normal responses, the brains did not give the same result when the limbs of patients with integrity disorder were touched. It seems that the limbs the patients want amputated are perceived by their brains as undefined and redundant. In short, the unwanted organ can be felt at least as much as a normal organ, but finds no response in the brain. We perceive the human body as one with each of its parts. They think they become whole when they are missing. In other words, they believe that when they get rid of unwanted limbs, they are no longer disabled and have a normal body. Of course, Dave Openshaw is not the only victim of this disease. Patients with at least as extraordinary results are seen every day. 
The number of patients who have lost both arms, both legs, and even their hearing reaches into the thousands. Jewel Shooping, the American has dreamed of being blind since she was a child and passionately pursues this desire. So much so that at an early age, Jewel tried to walk through dark corridors without seeing anything, and at the age of 18, she began pretending to be blind by using dark-rimmed sunglasses and a cane, despite having no impaired or reduced vision. The interesting thing was that not only was he pretending, but he was also trying to live without seeing by closing his eyes under the frame, and of course this did not satisfy him. When her mother told her that constantly looking at the sun a lot would damage her eyes, she would lie on the grass and look at the sun for hours, hoping that she would lose her sight. The psychologist she met online in 2015 would change her life. The psychologist invites Jewel to Chicago and, after keeping her in for a checkup for two weeks, offers to put chemicals in her eyes. After pouring the chemicals, she would file a claim with the emergency room, saying it was an accident. Jewel looks in the mirror one last time and says goodbye to herself and drips the chemicals given by the psychologist, but when she wakes up the next morning, she realizes she can still see and has a nervous breakdown because she can't see. However, within six months, when he completely loses his sight and goes blind, he achieves his dreams. Although her family rejects her when she learns that what happened was no accident, Jewel says, I believe I should have been like this from the beginning, I should have been born blind. Jewel's psychological condition is seen in almost all people suffering from the same disease. Patients exhibit disabled behavior even though they are not disabled. For example, although Chloe Jennings is perfectly healthy, she wears a leg brace and uses a wheelchair. Having a perfectly healthy body that can ski, Chloe's biggest dream is to become paralyzed by getting rid of her spinal cord. Chloe, a research scientist educated at the University of Cambridge, lives in a wheelchair both in her personal life and at work. An interesting detail was uncovered in a study of childhood patients with body integrity identity disorder. The closest childhood friends of many of the patients were limb amputees. This is actually more than a coincidence, it is one of the first outward manifestations of the disorder. In other words, when the patients are still young, they cannot make sense of the abnormal situation in themselves and think they have a disability, and they show a positive tendency towards amputees because they see them as healthy individuals who are free from their disabilities. Children with body integrity and identity disorders admire other children who have been amputated or paralyzed because they see them as healthy and even better than themselves. The disorder was first reported in the medical world in 1977. First described as sexually oriented under the name apotemnophilia in the article by Greg Firth and John Manny, it was later seen that it was not only due to a sexual proclivity and split into different branches. The accepted name today is Body Integrity Identity Disorder. Initially, the disorder was categorized only in the field of clinical psychology and psychiatry, but recent research has yielded results that support the inclusion of the disorder in neurology, but as research in the medical world is still ongoing, different societies have a different stance on treatment and limb amputation. The medical world is divided on this issue. In principle, the integrity of the body is considered sacred. This prevents amputation in cases where the patient's life is not in danger. For this reason, patients are asked to undergo healing processes with group therapies and antidepressants, while there are also opinions that advocate granting patients requests for surgery due to the fact that it is a neurological case, that is, a functional disorder in the brain. In fact, we have said that there is as yet no method of treatment that has been found to produce positive results. We shall see what it will do and what path the medical world will follow. However, until a lasting cure is found, bodily integrity will continue to be high on the list of identity disorder disorders. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and leave your opinion below the video, and of course like if you found it interesting. See you soon in the next video.